Post-election, there is a group of women, many of them from the far left, who are expressing outrage and sorrow, claiming that their rights are going to be violated or are being violated. But is this really true? During this show, we are going to review some of the reactions by women to the election. We're going to talk about how women are really faring today, not just in the Western world and Newsflash, we're actually doing really well in the Western world, but some of our fellow sisters in other countries. And we're going to be talking about the controversial 4B movement. The 4B movement has been making some more traction online. It originated in South Korea. And we're going to unpack what is actually good about this movement that is growing among women, what is wrong with this movement, and all in all, how this is a cautionary tale for the Western woman. As you guys know, my heart with this podcast is to help people become fully alive and to live up to their full potential, both men and women, but we obviously talk to a lot of women on the show. And so as I'm gonna be talking about this, it is through that lens of examining some of these trends and some of the ideas that some women have today about how they are faring in the Western world and unpacking the reality of how we are actually faring and then what we can learn from all of this. All right, so for starters, how did women vote in this latest election? As you guys know, I voted after a lot of prayer and thought for Donald Trump because he was less pro-abortion than Kamala Harris. That was the core reason. Kamala Harris was the most pro-abortion candidate in American history. I have been very critical of Kamala Harris and her extreme pro-abortion platform. As you guys know, I have also been critical of many of the pro-abortion positions that President Trump has taken, especially in the last few months. So as you guys know, no shocker here, the majority of American women did vote Democrat. This is a general trend. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that Democrats and liberal progressive policies typically sound a lot more like they're going to help people and they're going to serve people and help communities and help those that are poor and suffering. That is typically the kind of bleeding heartstring, wear your heart on your sleeve, liberal stereotype that some women find really compelling. Now, one of the movements on the right lately has been to show women the most loving loving and the most compassionate way to help people is actually through a lot of conservative policies. So this is, of course, the ongoing pull and tug between liberal and conservative in today's media environment and among podcasting. All that to say, the number of women, though, who are voting Republican is changing. It is increasing and it increased significantly in this last election. It's important to note that in the 2020 election for women under the age of 30, Biden had a 35 point lead over Trump. This was back in 2020. Now in 2024, that 35 point lead that Joe Biden had over President Trump shrunk to only a 24 point lead under Kamala Harris. So the reality is less women, less Gen Z women, yes, young, young women are voting Democrat in this last election. And this is despite an incredible amount of money, almost a billion dollars being spent by Democrats to tell women that if they don't vote for Kamala Harris, their rights will be taken away. As you guys know, the number one thing that they were promoting with that message is that they needed the right to have an abortion because if they don't have the right to abortion, the right to end the life of a baby in their womb, then they're not gonna somehow be free. The reality is, Killing a baby does not make you free, and there's not a single pro-life law in the country that restricts miscarriage care or helping women during life-threatening emergencies with medical care. This is one of the big misconceptions. We've talked about this before in the podcast. We're not going to get into all that today, but what we're going to do now is talk about the 4B movement, because this has been a new trend that has started in the wake of the election. So let's take a look. What is the 4B movement? American women are swearing off men, and it's all because of Donald Trump. Well, not all of them, but... Interest in a movement called 4B surged online after it was announced Donald Trump had won the US election. So what is it? The movement basically calls on women not to engage in sex, have kids, marry or date men. After the election result was announced, there was more than 50,000 mentions of 4B on X from US accounts. And since then, X accounts mentioning the words 4B have reached more than 45 million. So where does it come from? It began in South Korea in the 2010s in response to increasing sexual violence, gender inequality and societal pressures. In Korean, 4B represents the movement's four no's. No marriage to men, no dating men, no having children with men, and no sex with men. As well as encouraging celibacy, the movement inspired young women to bend their makeup and shave their heads as part of a protest against consumerist culture and societal pressure to perform for the male gaze. So, why is it taking off in the US right now? Data on the exit poll from the election shows that 55% of men voted for Trump, while 53% of women voted for Vice President Kamala Harris. The president-elect has openly touted his role in the Supreme Court ruling to overturn Roe versus Wade, a landmark decision that protected a woman's right to have an abortion. 
Okay, so first we have to set the record straight here. I have a lot of thoughts. More women voted for Joe Biden than for Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris actually got less of the female vote than her predecessor, Joe Biden. So that's an important point of context here. Even though Kamala Harris made her whole campaign basically fear-mongering, telling women that they had to vote for her. So that's the first point. The second point is President Trump, and you guys know I've been very critical on the podcast about this very point President Trump, unfortunately, in my view, very unfortunately, has not been the pro-life leader that I would love him to be. He actually supports abortion in many cases, and that's something that he made part of his campaign as well. So this idea that President Trump is going to take away abortion if he becomes president, I wish it was true. Unfortunately, that's not what he has indicated even in his own campaign. I'm not signing a ban, and there's no reason to sign a ban because we've gotten what everybody wanted. Democrats, Republicans, and everybody else. Now, it is true that President Trump in the past appointed justices to the U.S. Supreme Court who were originalist constitutionalists, meaning that they supported the Constitution and the right to life. And they ruled the overturning of Roe v. Wade, allowing some legal protections for preborn children. Now, Dobbs v. Jackson, the case that overruled Roe v. Wade, wasn't complete legal protection for preborn children. In California, you can still kill a child in the womb through all nine months of pregnancy for any reason. So the reality is, I wish the overturn of Roe v. Wade meant that there was complete constitutional protection for preborn children, but we are not there yet. So the entire 4B movement being some kind of a reaction to a pro-life Trump is already off on the wrong footing because it doesn't even make sense. That being said, let's examine the 4B movement a little more closely. So South Korea, it was born and originated out of South Korea in the early 2010s. Women saying that they're going to be saying no to these four things having to do with men. And most importantly, starting with they're not going to procreate. They're not going to have sex and they're not going to date or marry men. Very interesting overview here, 4B. I've got a lot of thoughts. There's some good and some bad here. But before we go to that, let's check out some of the responses coming from people joining the 4B movement post-election. It's been long debated at Thanksgiving. Is turkey better or ham? If you picked either, you'd be wrong. Because the third and correct option is a free ham from Good Ranchers worth $110. During Good Ranchers Thanksgiving special, you can choose any box of their 100% American meat and wild-caught seafood and get a free 10-pound spiral-cut ham added to it for free. What I love about Good Ranchers is that it is 100% sourced from the United States. And when you choose GoodRanchers.com, you're choosing more than just delicious meat. You're choosing to support local American farms and ranches and standing up for transparency and safety in our food supply. No need to waste time in long lines at the grocery store since Good Ranchers is delivering high quality, 100% American meat straight to your door. You can celebrate what matters most this Thanksgiving time with the people that you love. To claim your free Thanksgiving ham before they're gone, go to GoodRanchers.com, subscribe to any of their boxes of 100% American beef, chicken, pork, or wild-caught seafood, and use my code LILA at checkout. Be sure to order by November 19th for guaranteed delivery by Thanksgiving. Enjoy your ham. Let's check out some of the responses coming from people joining the 4B movement post-election. I have to cut it short on that. Does it down, right? I think that this is too... It's getting here. See here. Maybe I gotta cut it. Here we go. Have I given up on America? Yeah. Also given up on coloring this hair because, right? <laughs> coloring my hair, having my hair be long and luxurious, all that shit. being skinny, being hot, being all the things that the patriarchy wants us to be because clearly they don't give a shit about us. And I'm talking to you too, those of you ladies who have the internalized misogyny required to do what you did minorities who are so scared of a woman in power that you'd rather cozy up to the white man just in case some crumbs fall off his plate so that you may eat from them. All right. This is so sad on so many levels. Also, I have to say that more black women and black men voted for Donald Trump than last election. So this idea that it's only white people voting for Trump is not correct. But that is aside from the point. All right. In my view, this and a lot of what's happening today in American culture shows me a sense of deep self-loathing that some women are experiencing about their own femininity. And I will say that the rise in young girls, especially pubescent young girls, adolescent, young adolescent, young girls who are going through puberty and then they start hating their bodies. They start thinking they're born in the wrong body. They want to become men. They go through transgender surgeries. I think about someone like Chloe Cole. We've talked about her in the show, of course, as you guys know, and she had a double mastectomy at age 15 because she hated her body and didn't like her body. This shows me that there is an identity crisis that a lot of women have about themselves 
as women. Now, womanhood is not how long your hair is. Womanhood is not how you look if you're super beautiful by certain fashion archetype icon status. Womanhood is not about that. Womanhood is about a lot of other things I think that have to do with our ability to nurture and our ability to bring new life into the world. I'm not saying that some of these more feminine expressions are bad in any way. They can be very beautiful, but they are not necessary. Notice she also is here blaming the patriarchy for why she's doing this. We're going to unpack this here more in a moment. All right. 4B movement starting. You know what we're going to do? We're not going to dye our hair anymore. We're not going to do makeup. We're not going to use filters. We're not going to go get the skin stuff. We're not going to dress up and look nice. Why? So that they can come and act like they own us because we look like this? Absolutely not. No, y'all. We... The 4B movement means, like, we gonna be cozy, comfy in our own skin. Okay, so there's a good thing happening here, and then there's also a bad thing happening here, and then it's also happening for the wrong reason. This idea that you have to put a filter on your face, get your hair dyed, wear makeup all the time, this heavy emphasizing of one's physical appearance, yeah, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that as a woman. And I think some of the most holy and beautiful women that I know do not spend a lot of time on their hair, their makeup, their clothes. That's not their focus. In fact, some of the holy list women I know wear a habit. They're actually consecrated virgins, completely celibate for life because they have married God and they're doing that in order to serve their community. So you don't have to, in order to be a woman, wear makeup, have long hair, dye your hair, anything like that. But if the reason that you're choosing not to wear makeup, dye your hair, do all these things is because you actually hate men or it's a rejection of masculinity in general, then that's a problem. Now, to put a little more nuance here, they're talking about the patriarchy. So they're not saying we hate men outright. They're saying we hate the patriarchy. And this is such a tragedy because the reality is there is no oppression of the Western woman today in today's world. There is none. And so we're going to unpack that more in a minute, but let's keep watching a couple more to get a picture of what's happening with this viral trend. To the men of America, thank you so much because you have now officially pushed any woman who is ever questioning herself away from you and into my arms. (laughs) And I am now 100% gay. I wasn't sure before, but now I am positive. So if you're a man, don't look at me, don't touch me, don't speak to me, don't breathe near me, okay? Okay, I'm glad we got that sorted. Okay, so that lady does hate men, apparently, in this video. All right, which is not good to do. Let's keep watching. <laughs> oh, this is not a video. It just says, I like the new idea from the 4B movement about not engaging or speaking with men whenever we can. That sounds so peaceful. We can just ignore and block, let their loneliness epidemic spread. Very sad. Donald Trump is president, and I think all women should stop having sex for the next four years in protest and protection of your bodies. As we know, if that little baby inside you gives you any trouble and you need an emergency health care, you're f- and you're going to die. I think that is sufficient enough reason to stop having sex. Okay. Again, there's a silver lining to some of this. If you're not ready to be a parent, if you're not married, yeah, I encourage abstinence. I think it's a great choice and you're totally capable of it, ladies. All I have to say is good luck getting laid. <laughs> Um, especially in Florida, because me and my girlies are participating in the 4B movement. That's my next plan. And I'm dead serious. Okay, more kudos to you and your new commitment to abstinence. I think that that is actually a good thing in general. The less people are sleeping around outside of marriage, people that are not prepared or wanting to be parents, the less abortions we will have. Nine out of every 10 women who have an abortion are unmarried. Abortion really is the consequence of people who are not married and not committed to each other, doing the act of procreation, actually procreating a new life, and then destroying that life. So in that sense, this is a one big beautiful silver lining of the 4B movement. I'm going to be honest, I was very blindsided by the results this morning. Um, I've decided that cigarettes don't count today, and I honestly might go get a tattoo. But I also have decided that for the next four years, I am going to abstain from schmecks with men. And funny enough, I actually just broke up with my boyfriend a handful of days before the election, and it had nothing to do with the anticipation of Donald Trump winning this election. It had everything to do with with problems within our relationship and massive differences between who we were as people. Um, 
which was unfortunate and sad. I wish him well, though. Um, but yeah, as a woman, my bodily autonomy matters. And this is my way to exercise sovereignty over that. Great. If you are, especially if you are wanting to have an abortion, if you get pregnant, you should not do the activity that might be able to get you pregnant. So again, this part of the 4B movement is actually brilliant. Abstinence is a beautiful thing. It's a good thing. There's a long tradition of it that women can hold, especially those that have a faith because they can choose to not have sex before they are married or not have sex if they're not going to be married, practice abstinence. Here's the amazing thing. Anybody is capable of practicing abstinence. Anybody, any person, they have the freedom and the will to be able to do it and they can practice abstinence. And I do encourage the Western woman, if you're not married, practice abstinence. It will save you from a lot of heartbreak. It will save you from unwanted and unexpected pregnancy. And it is, I believe, the right thing to do. Now, does this mean that the motivations behind the 4B movement are good ones or that they're healthy for women? Not so much. And that is something that we need to unpack a little bit more. The first question I'm asking everybody in my life from this moment forward, who did you vote for? If I get anything aside from Kamala, get the fuck out of my face. I am done, honestly. It costs me zero dollars to cut people off. And in this economy, I'm taking all the free I can get. No comment. That just sounds very, very dark. All right. Here's the question. Are women truly oppressed today in the West or are they in danger of being oppressed? I'm going to give you a resounding answer to that. And the answer is no. Western women, American women are the most privileged women in the world. We have every single freedom and right that men have and then some. In fact, if you're a Western woman today, you are more likely to graduate college than men. You're more likely to attend college than men. And many of you are more likely to graduate high school than men. Women in the workforce are almost 50-50 with men. So this idea that women are not faring as well as men or they're somehow less than men today under the law, there's not a single law that you can point me to that in any way unequally treats women versus men. Did you know that women now make up 60% of all college enrollments? This has broad social and economic implications because as you know, those with college degrees often get higher paying jobs than those who do not have college degrees. Not always, but often. There's a lot of other categories too where women are faring well. For example, mental health services. It is typically seen as a good thing for women to pursue mental health services, but it can often be stigmatized for men. Another example is military service. If there would be a draft, men are the ones that are gonna get drafted, not women. Men are the first that go to war to protect the country, not women. When it comes to the family court system, there's a lot of criticism that the family court system often benefits the mother more than the father, making more concessions for women than for men. Let's talk about social support systems. Welfare, child care support, and housing benefits often prioritize single mothers, putting men who may be struggling at a disadvantage. Now, I'm not saying all this to say that women shouldn't get some of the support, that mothers don't need support. No, of course not. But what I am saying is this broad brush generalization that women are not doing well in the Western world because of policies that unfairly favor men is a complete fabrication. Yes, some women are struggling in the Western world today, but it's not because of government policies that are shackling us and hurting our bodily autonomy. If we are struggling as women today, it's because we have a crisis of meaning as women. Let's take a look more closely at that. And that crisis of meaning as women is very connected to the underpinning motivations of the 4B movement. Mental health among women has been on the decline over the last decade. This is also true for men, I must say, but the reality is many women are being medicated, are being treated for depression, anxiety, and other mental health issues increasingly over the last decade. During the pandemic, you may have seen one out of every three teen girls was considering suicide. These are very disturbing statistics. But the reason for women struggling so much today is not because, again, of government policy restricting our rights. We have all of our rights. I would argue that the reason for so much of our unhappiness as women is our lack of strong and thriving relationships where we feel we belong and there's a mutual gift of ourselves and the receiving of another person as a gift. Unfortunately, it is exactly things like the legalization and promotion of abortion that further create the misery that women face. Why is this? Because abortion at its core is about, first of all, irresponsible sex, having sex with someone and not planning to raise a family with them, but instead opting to kill the offspring, that child that's created via sex. So it already treats relationships between men and women as cheap and sex as cheap. 
And then number two, rejecting the gift of a child's life to the point that you would even kill that child. A woman who is rejecting the pregnancy that she has and the baby that she has is already in a position where she's not in a place of nurture and love and care and commitment to a new human life, but she's in a place about worry and concern for herself and her own future and focused on her own needs. The reality is when women are more sexually available to men, they're sleeping around with men, they're competing with men to sleep with men, it actually doesn't elevate respect for women and it actually doesn't help us be healthier or happier, it actually drives the sexual marketplace more in men's favor. And what I mean by that is not their real favor. It's not like men are actually happier and healthier themselves, but they have the appearance of the upper hand because now they have the power to sleep with whoever they want and women still are the ones that can get pregnant and deal with unplanned pregnancies. Let's take a look at this video. Exodus 90 has changed the lives of thousands of men, making them more spiritually, physically, and mentally strong, and more successful in their relationships, work, and life. Ladies, this is an amazing program to share with the men that you love. And men, if you haven't tried it already, now is the time. Exodus 90 was created by men for men and offers men a path to greater freedom by helping them temporarily detach from unhealthy habits and teaching them physical, mental, and spiritual toughness. This 90-day journey, supported by the Exodus 90 app and community, connects men with accountability partners and provides daily inspiration to strengthen their resolve and encourage them down a path of self-discipline. The results speak for themselves. 99% of men who make an exodus report a greater level of freedom than they've ever experienced before. For the men in our audience, I encourage you to join Exodus 90 with Monsignor James Che, the president of the University of Mary, who is the spiritual guide for Advent this year on the Exodus 90 app. Go to exodus90.com slash Lila to learn more about Advent on the Exodus 90 app. That's exodus90.com slash Lila to join men from around the world this Advent starting December 1st. Let's take a look at this video. Ever wonder if romantic relationships are getting increasingly more difficult to navigate these days? Why fewer couples are getting married and later than ever before? Time for a crash course on the economics of sex. So in an exchange relationship where men want sex more often than women do, who decides when it will happen? She does, of course. Sex is her resource. Sex and consensual relationships will happen when women want it to. So how do women decide to begin a sexual relationship? Pricing. Women have something of value that men want. Badly. Something men are actually willing to sacrifice for. So how much does sex cost for men? It might cost them nothing but a few drinks and compliments. Or a month of dates and respectful attention. Or all the way up to <gasps> a lifetime Ooh. promise to share all of his affections, wealth, and earnings with her exclusively. The price varies widely. But if women are the gatekeepers, why don't very many women charge more, so to speak? Because pricing is not entirely up to women. The market value of sex is part of a social system of exchange, an economy, if you will, wherein men and women learn from each other. And from others. What they ought to expect from each other sexually. Now, this whole video goes in to show how women, if they're making themselves more sexually available to men, men don't really have an incentive for why they would commit to that woman. And I think there's a lot of truth to this. Of course, this doesn't mean that every man who has sex premaritally with a woman will not commit or every woman that has sex premaritally will not be able to be in a committed marriage. No, that's not what this is saying. But what it is saying is that the incentives have changed dramatically. Now, 50, 60 years ago, it was women saying to men, I will not have sex with you unless you marry me and raise our children. Today... In the 4B movement, women are saying, I will not have sex with you unless I have the right to kill my baby and reject you fully. Do you see how this has flipped? And who's happier because of it? Nobody. Here's the thing though. When we focus on our own needs at the expense of other people, including children or the relationships that we love, we find ourselves often more bitter, lonely, and miserable than even before. And this is the secret to the reason we have been made to be in relationship with other people as human beings. It is our relationships and giving of ourselves in our relationships and receiving from other people and the love that they can give us that gives us meaning in life. The people that are the happiest, according to different reports, show that they are in relationships, in happy marriages where they feel loved and are loved and they have children but they can love those children and be loved by those children. Love really is what makes the world go round. And let's look at women's rights globally. Are women in the West really doing poorly when it comes to our rights? Let's take a look at other countries. 
First of all, in Afghanistan, women are not allowed to speak or show their faces outside their home to avoid leading men into temptation. In regions of sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, young girls are often forced into marriages. In fact, recently in Iraq, they are considering lowering the age of consent for marriage, which is ridiculous, to the age of nine. So they would be forcing nine-year-olds to get married, aka be sexually abused at just nine years old in Iraq. In Russia, domestic violence is still not criminalized. In parts of the Middle East, North Africa, and South Asia, women aren't even allowed to travel without a male guardian. Did you know that in some Middle Eastern countries, there are honor laws that allow men to receive lenient sentences or even avoid punishment for harming female family members that they felt dishonored the family? In Nigeria and India, women still do not have equal inheritance rights or financial independence. In Iran, women can be severely punished and have even been killed for not wearing the hijab. Women are prohibited from driving in many parts of the Middle East and South Asia. In various African and Middle Eastern countries, women can't object to their husband taking additional wives. It is estimated that over 9 million people in Southeast Asia are victims of modern slavery. In the Philippines, it's estimated that there are over 100,000 children who are trafficked annually, primarily for sexual exploitation. Here's the reality. The United States has equal protection under the law for women and for men, and we have some of the most privilege and the most opportunities than women anywhere in the world in the United States. Now, the reality is there was work done by the early feminists, by the first feminists in the 20th century to help ensure these victories. But what has the feminist movement become in the past 50 or 60 years? Sadly and tragically, the feminist movement has become about abortion, sexual libertinism, and now with the 4B movement, it's taken this other turn to say now women's rights are about what? Not having sex? That one I can support, especially for those who are not married. Everylife.com is America's fastest growing baby diaper and wipes company. I love Every Life because this is a premium product made from the best materials for your little one, and everylife.com is a pro-life company. In fact, when you join the Changing Lives Club at everylife.com, you will get 10% off your order and you will also be able to donate one month's free supply to a mom or a baby in need so that they can get the diapers that they need. Did you know that some of the biggest diaper companies today like Huggies and Pampers are owned by conglomerates that are pro-abortion? That's why Every Life is so important. Not only is the product better, I know from personal experience, than the Huggies and Pampers products, but the Every Life diaper is also part of a mission to save lives. When you go to everylife.com join, you can join the Changing Lives Club. This way you can set up a subscription to get your diapers and your wipes, these premium products delivered right to your door for your little one. And after three months of the subscription, you will be able to donate for free a month's supply of diapers to a mom and a baby in need. So what are you waiting for? Go to everylife.com slash join. Join the Changing Lives Club. Use the code LILA at checkout. Get 10% off your order, start your subscription, and after three months, you can donate a full month's supply of diapers to a mom and a baby in need. Here's a map, by the way, of women's rights across the globe. Let's take a look. Now, some of these things listed on this map, I would not even consider rights. For example, the right to kill a baby, not a right. Nobody has that right. Another example would be if you are the prime minister of the country, then all of a sudden women have more rights. Not necessarily, but as you can see, Canada, the United States, Europe, most of the Western world, compared to the rest of the world, women are faring excellently. So here's the kernel of truth in the 4B movement. Your body does matter. Sex does matter. And your relationship with men and your ability to bring life into the world, all of these things matter. And so treasuring your body and your ability to bring life into the world by protecting it and not having sex with a man who you don't trust, you're not married to, you're not ready to have a baby with, that is actually a good idea. But the other extreme of saying, I hate men so much and this patriarchy so much that I'm never going to have children, I'm never going to get married, that I'm never going to talk to men, that of course is a bridge too far. Because here's the reality, men are not the people making you miserable. We have the power to make ourselves miserable. And so I, my encouragement to women who are considering the 4B movement is this, you don't have any rights that have been taken away. You have more rights than virtually any other woman in the world. You have more privileges and opportunities than virtually any other woman in the world today, being in the West, being in America. What are you gonna do with the incredible power and opportunities that you have today? Look on the bright side, see the cup half full, not half empty. Because the reality is it's actually all the way full. You have so many opportunities. And my hope is that more women can see 
the beauty and the gift of themselves, their bodies, and also respect and see the beauty and the gift of men, the beauty and the gift of children, and try to live in harmony with other people instead of seeing other people as the enemy. There has been a ton of fear-mongering that has happened specifically around the issue of abortion. We've addressed that in other episodes. We're not gonna get into all the details on that today. But I think that and the media's power, especially the Kamala Harris presidential campaign's power to fear monger women, tell them they're going to be miserable if Republicans are in charge, tell them that they're going to be miserable in general because their rights are being taken away. It is all a lie. Don't buy the lie. And instead, let's focus on the opportunities and the rights that we do have and use them to do the good. And so here's the movement I would like to promote, a movement that can actually encourage men to stand up and rise to the occasion and help us as women value ourselves and our sisters. What if women all in solidarity together agreed to not sleep with men until they have been married to that man. Yes, until that man has committed his lifelong fidelity and love to you publicly in a marriage ceremony. That would make so many more people not just happier, but healthier, and it would largely eradicate abortions overnight. I guarantee you, if we did this together as Western women, we would be a whole lot happier and our societies would be a whole lot healthier. And so my final words here is this, women, you were made for more, and men, you were made for more. You're made to love and be loved. God loves you. God is your father. God created you. And he loves you very, very much. And he wants you to live a life that is full of freedom and joy. And the best path to doing that includes living as best we can by a moral law that treats our bodies and the bodies of other people as sacred. And so for those women, I'm not saying you're going to be promised a happy marriage or many children, or you're going to be promised the perfect life and no suffering. But what I am saying is that the moral law is designed to help us and not to hurt us. And I want to encourage you guys to check out a series that I did recently with live action called The Truth About Sex, where we unpack some of the myths of purity culture and all of the myths of the sexual revolution and why it has lied to women and men and provide a better path about how monogamy, marriage, and family life is a secret to human happiness. A huge thank you to our partner, EWTN. EWTN is the largest religious network reaching millions of people with the truth of the faith, entertainment, and news. Check them out at EWTN.com.